it's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Bengals and the Titans, and it's coming up next. We welcome all of you to Nissan Stadium on the banks of the Cumberland River in downtown Nashville, Tennessee. This crowd here fired up for football as a moment ago their Titans were introduced. This should be a good one as the Titans get set to match up with the Cincinnati Bengals. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and CD, you look at our quarterback matchup in this ball game. That's where the focus naturally gravitates, and I think we have a fairly interesting one here. Joe Burrow of the Bengals, Ryan Tannehill of the Titans. We do indeed, and something I'm going to be watching for, who can get off to a fast start? If you can go out, get points on the first drive, preferably a touchdown, you can really set the tone for the game. And I think that both of these quarterbacks are more than capable of doing just that. This one teed up, and off we go from Nashville. On the return, Dontrell Hilliard. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. Here comes the Tennessee offense, and you see Ryan Tannehill leading them out. And one of the things that has really impressed me about Ryan Tannehill has been his perseverance. Early in his career, didn't have the success that he desired. Had some injuries that slowed his development. But he kept working at his craft, and now he's a guy that I think you can put a game on his shoulders. Now a first carry for Derrick Henry. Tough running, but not a lot to show for it. They stop him shy of the 25. Only a couple for him there on the game's first play, and it's second down. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. And that is caught, one-handed. Oh, my, pull it in. A big play that time for the Titans. Now he's been doing this for a lot of years, with the arm strength still there, and he showed it off on that one. And we knew that they tried to attack the secondary, but I'm not sure that we thought they'd do it right on the first drive of the game. But here they saw an opportunity, seized it, and it's a big play right off the bat. And you can see in the next-gen stats, that one 62 yards in the air. So that changes things in a big way. Now from all the way down inside the 30, here's first and 10. Here's Tannehill. Flush to his right. And Tannehill's got the first as he slides to a hole. Let's go. He was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. Our game not even two minutes old, but a quick red zone opportunity. They have a first and ten at the 13-yard line. 
Tannehill going to turn and give this to Henry. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Nice play right there to stop him behind the line, but I want to see how this defense continues to play him here in the first half. Yeah, we know. You know better than I. He has the ability to take over a game. So what do you do? Yeah, I think you have to make sure that you bottle him in at varying levels. Because if you crowd everyone to the line of scrimmage, if he breaks through, it's nothing but room to run. On second and 11 now, Tannehill got his man complete over the middle. It's Rodgers. And the Titans are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. Boy, how about the speed with which this offense can get down the field? It's taking them no time at all to get down here. And now they're set up with a first and goal. A terrific opening drive has them knocking on the door, first and goal. Henry. And into the end zone for a Tennessee touchdown. Derrick Henry taking it in from two yards out. And the Titans take the run out of the field and score on their opening drive. So it was the passing game that got him down here. The closer to the goal line, it's the running game that gets him home. Certainly appears that they lulled the defense into thinking that the passing game was going to be it the entire drive. Nice change up there going to the running game to get him over the goal line. On for the point after is Randy Bullock. And this is good. Our score is 7 0 Tennessee. That drive goes 80 yards in six plays. And Derrick Henry able to finish it off with a touchdown run. send this one away after the touchdown. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked out officially at the 21. Here come the Bengals and CD, of course. It's Joe Burrow out of LSU at quarterback. Hey, we all love a good story. And what we like even more, guys who can fight through adversity. Joe Burrow coming out of high school, goes to Ohio State, doesn't get a chance to start, transfers to LSU, not thought to be a top prospect, ends up the number one pick in the draft and justifies it. Tremendous play, excellent mobility, and leadership off the charts. Burrow and the Bengals with a first and 10 at their own 21. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Here's Higgins out on the right side. And he's upended after a gain of four up to the 25-yard line. Now, Charles, what's the mindset here offensively? You gave up the touchdown pretty quickly. Would it have changed if you had gotten a stop and it would be 0-0 right now or no? I wouldn't think so. I think in most cases, just down a touchdown, you know, I mean, we're just getting started here. It should be a long way to go. You think to yourself, stick with the game plan, all the things you worked on in practice. But you have some teams that when they get down, their natural tendency is to aggressively strike back. And let's see if they want to get outside of the game plan we expect and try and be aggressive on their first series. What makes a draw play like that successful? Well, we did see where he made the first wave miss, and that was a big part of it. But a lot of it is just being actors back there, making the defense think it's going to be a pass. A lot of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Now Joe Mixon. Mixon with a first down and more. And down to the 27-yard line. 48 yards rushing for him now his first two carries of the ball game. Well, I tell you what, when you get a running back who can move like that in the open field, that's something to take advantage of, and they certainly did there. And first and foremost, this is all about vision. He can see the play developing right in front of him. And once he's past the line of scrimmage and got a full head of steam behind him, 
He's just going to keep right on going. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. From the shotgun, Joe Burrow. Over the middle, he finds Higgins. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. And he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. Another 13 yards there twice in a row, and they're on the move. Another first down as well. You were telling me this yesterday. That's exactly what they want to do on the opening drive, establish the ground game. Yeah, remember our conversation? We were talking about what one of the GMs in the league has told me repeatedly. It's a big man's game, and it's not necessarily size. He's talking about playing some big boy football. Line up, get leverage, knock people back, and establish the run early. First and goal, and a chance to get that initial touchdown right back. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it to the end zone, but it's incomplete. Jensen Good, he's going to be a very busy guy. Two catches already in his opening drive, and they were looking his way for a third. I think they put this defense on notice that that could be a really, really frequent combination. Another shot from the one on second and goal. Mixon trying to punch it in, and he is unable to get in. They stop him at the line of scrimmage. He tried to get the nose of the football across to no avail, and now it's third and goal. Sports. Start of the second quarter, and it's the Bengals in control of the football as they'll see what they can do on third and goal. again and he takes it into the end zone touchdown Bengals Joe Mixon taking it in from a yard out and the Bengals are an extra point away from tying up this football game so the second down run didn't work they run it again on third down and get in I wasn't sure if they might pass it Charles we know that they like to mix it up down here around the goal line yeah almost felt like the offensive line said forget mixing it up Let's call our favorite running play over our best blockers, and let's get this one in. Extra point by McPherson, up and good, and we are tied here in the second quarter. So that drive goes eight plays, and it all culminated in the touchdown run coming from Joe Mixon. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. And Hilliard will elect to not return it. The Titans coming back onto the field for their second drive. And that last drive, so effective in the passing game, resulting in the touchdown. Maybe not many people were focused on the trenches. There was good protection there. Excellent protection. So now defensively, You've almost got to get down to those starters blocks like you're a sprinter. Get lower than those guys on offense and find a way to roar through them or around them to get into the face of the passer. Easier said than done, though. Way easier <laughs> said than done. But they've got to try something because right now they're just cutting them to shreds. 
And he'll be taken down by the Bengal pressure. There's Come Sam on. Hubbard that time in we there to run. bring him to the ground. Well, on that one, they, they go with a play fake CD, but I don't think anybody really was fooled. All eyes were fixated on the quarterback, and they got him to the ground. And to run this play successfully, you've got to make sure that everyone is doing their part. You actually have to sell this play. You've got to sell the run action. Otherwise, why do you stop at the running back? You just run straight for the quarterback and put him on the ground. So still 14 yards to go, second down. Another try after the first down sack. Tannehill under pressure, and they got to him again. Sam Hubbard picks up his second sack of the afternoon. So, Brandon, we've sat in with a lot of coaches, and when they talk about things they want to accomplish offensively, I'm not sure that sack and sack are on their play sheet. After the sack, they'll come up now third and long. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see them run the ball here just to try and get some space. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. This will go to Henry out wide. And he is out of bounds, able to get it across the 20-yard line. They get 12 yards back, but it still leads to a fourth and long. We can make this one pretty simple. Rock the ball, his progression's downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football? and knocked him down to force a fourth down. On fourth down, here's Brett Kern to punt the football away. Fielded at the 33. That'll go as a punt of 42, seven on the return. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown, and now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense. who got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it, they've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at the 40. Now Burrow. Open man is Uzama. That catch good for only a couple. I'm wondering if the same thing went through your mind as mine. When I see a big man like that make a catch, all I keep thinking to myself is, big man with football. <laughs> Look out, everyone. He may not juke you a whole lot, right? He may not run past you because of his size. You're talking about a guy weighing in the 270 range. But boy, once he gets his mitts on the ball, he's going to be tough to bring down. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Here's Burl. He's going to go for a big play downfield. And this is caught right along the sideline. What a job of keeping the toes in bounds there. A big play there for Cincinnati. Well, partner, that's how you make a long drive suddenly. Not so long anymore. One big play, and they're already in field goal range with designs on getting more than that. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Now it's Burrow. And he'll go right back to Chase. That's caught again. And the Bengals are going to be set up with a first and goal coming up as they get him down at the six-yard line. And these two hooked up on a nice game to play before, and I always admire play callers that see a play that works and go right back to it. So they went right back to him. The reward, they're set up with first and goal. They'll give it to Mixon, and he will take it on in for a Bengals touchdown. Joe Mixon with his second touchdown here in this first half, and the Bengals have taken the lead. 
So his strong first half continues as he finds the end zone here for the second time. And definitely good blocking at the point of attack. And you just have to love watching the way he can create space down near the goal line. And he's able to take it into the end zone. And McPherson on for the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. Five plays there on that drive. And it all culminated in the touchdown run coming from Joe Mixon. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. Taken at the goal line. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. That 7 nothing lead of theirs short-lived as they've now given up two straight touchdowns to fall behind by seven. Yeah, but no cause for discouragement here. Yeah, they've fallen behind, but haven't they proven that they can go down and score? So what was the formula that got them down there the first time? Get back to something close to that, and maybe they can get this game tied up. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at their own 21. He'll start with a give to Henry, and he'll get about six up to the 27-yard line. Now, Brandon, that's the way you want to run the football. There should almost be quote bubbles above the offense right now. Bam, boom, biff. That's how they feel good about moving the football. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. Tannehill with a play fake to Henry. He'll throw instead. This is Jeff Swain, the tight end. And yeah, they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. On first down, it's Tannehill. That's complete to his tight end, Ferkser. And he's got a first down as he's going to be taken down. But a very nice pick up there just in front of the two-minute warning. Reminder coming up in a couple of minutes' time. We'll pay a visit to Jonathan Coachman, the coach in our EA Sports studios. They'll have a look back at the next-gen stats from this first half of action. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. Second and ten. Now it's Tannehill. Caught on the right side by Jones. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we talk about finding the soft spot defensively. How do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that'll pull you out of that spot that they want to get into. That's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mousetrap. That's hard to do because when you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards him. And he will have a Titans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. We didn't need to ask around the league, but we got to confirm this guy's a good player. They've got to find a way to get him more involved, call a few more plays that target him. Absolutely, because here we are toward the end of the first half, and that's the first target, not just the first catch, first target. Watch the run. Watch the run. Watch the run. 
Throwing again is Tannehill. And right side, Henry's got it. And he'll be out of bounds about a half to a full yard shy of the five. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? A chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. From the gun, here's Tannehill. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. That was a touchdown if he could have hung on. Instead, it was a well-timed collision to jar that one free. They come up here with another shot from the six-yard line, and it's second and goal now. To the air again, Tannehill. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. The Titans going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. A big play forthcoming. Here's third and goal. Out of the gun, Tannehill. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. More problems here on third down. They've converted only once so far in this first half. And you know as well as I do in this league, if you don't win on third down, it makes it hard to win a ball game because then you're relying on your defense, you're relying on your special teams. You've got to get it done with your offensive unit. And Bullock will put this one through. So a long drive gets him down inside the five, but ultimately they settle for just the field goal. And I have to think that if maybe they were a yard closer, that would have made their decision tougher, and I think they likely would have gone for it. But in this situation, they just decided to take the three, and I think it was a smart move. After the field goal now, it's Bullock to kick it away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. Joe Mixon in the Bengal offense ready to go back to work. And he's found the end zone twice, and now I'm guessing he's thinking, hey, let's find it three times. And you got to figure from the defensive perspective, how has he gotten there twice? What are we going to do to keep him out for a third time? How do we tighten things down? Because he and his offensive mates, they are really in sync right now. The Bengals drive about to get going. And they'll have a little bit of time to work with. 35 seconds until the break. First down. Here's Burrow. And the catch made. It's Tyler Boyd. Seven yards to pick up there. Final play of the half for Burrow and company. He's got Higgins over the middle, and they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. So we have reached halftime here, and it's the visiting Bengals out in front. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. First, though, time for a check of the next-gen stats from that first half for Cincinnati. And even though they've got a halftime lead, they're likely devising ways as we speak to try and get a little more production from their passing game. And meanwhile, for the Titans, they too found some success throwing the football. But I think both teams would say there's room for improvement in the second half. 
Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. Taking it about the one. And he's only going to make it to the 13-yard line and no go, further. Go. And the Bengal offense ready to go here to start the third quarter. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys, they're tinkering like crazy. What's it gonna take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. Burrow gonna lead up the Bengals here, first and 10 at their own 13. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Got a man open, it's Chase. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. On second down, here's Mixon. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken Let's go. down. Let's go. Let's 88 go. yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. That's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside. And so many times defense is like, okay, we got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. From the shotgun, it's Burrow. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap, and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. Here's second and ten. Now it's Burrow. And his throw here is incomplete. I like the look of that play right from the beginning. I thought he should have seen the coverage that was there. Tried to force it in. That one he's fortunate just fell incomplete. An important play right here, third and ten. And I would expect pressure here. On third down, Burrow. He will find his man Chase complete. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Whenever we talk about moving the sticks and controlling the football, there's a great example right there. Those are the third downs you need to convert to win football games. We're in the third quarter of this one, and this is a tight one. In order to maintain pace, keep the ball away from the other team and put points on the board, those are the plays they need to continue to convert. So the ball moves from their own 41 to the other 41 here for first and 10. To the air again, Burrow. That's caught by the tight end, Drew Sample. They'll contain him to just four, second down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. From the 37, they work on second and six. Burrow looking to pass. Throw left side complete to Chase. That catch good for only a yard, and it will be third down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, 
why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Throwing again, it's Burrow. Complete to his tight end sample. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. Many different ways to create space, but on... Now Mike Vrabel, unsure of that last call. He's going to throw out the red flag. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. So the challenge there does not go their way. This will indeed remain a completed pass. Again, it's Burrow. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and 10. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. His throw incomplete. So back-to-back -back incompletions. Third down here in 10, but you're still in field goal range. And that's the thing to keep in mind. They're in field goal range. So now you don't take any unnecessary risks, but you try and find a way to get back to what you were doing earlier in the drive in order to finish this one off. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and 10. Now Burrow. Able to find Higgins. And he's not going to sniff the first down here. He stopped at the 25. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Brandon, a good idea there on third down. Run a little clear out and hope you can get your receiver the ball coming across the formation. Nice design, but well played defensively, and they stop him well short. So on fourth down, off goes Burrow. On comes Evan McPherson for the Bengal field goal. From the left hash, it's a 42-yard attempt. McPherson's kick is good. And that moves him up by a touchdown now at 17-10. Well, looking at it from a defensive perspective, that keeps the deficit very, very manageable. You know, all things considered, not a bad job on the defensive side. I would say that you've pointed out something pretty good right there, and that is you actually have both sides happy with that exchange. You know, happy in quotes, of course. One team, hey, we've kept, kept it within range. The other side saying, hey, we put points on the board and did stretch out the lead. Let's see how this one turns out. Yeah, still bottom line, though, three points for the opening drive of the third quarter. Here's McPherson now to send it away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. The Titans offense gears up for their first possession of the second half. And their deficit a little wider now than it was at halftime following the field goal a moment ago. But the goal is still the same because you know they want to come out, establish a rhythm in the second half, and get going. Make no mistake about it, though. Kicking field goals, not in their game plan. They need to get the ball in the end zone. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. First down and much more here for Jones. And all the way up to the 37-yard line. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. A 
first down carry for Henry. And down he goes at the 45 after a pickup of nine. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. The last run got nine. That leaves him with second and a yard. They'll run it again with Henry. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Now, after the running play, we've got a man down on the field. We'll check on his status when we get back. First down, Henry, and nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. On second down, here's Henry. And across midfield he goes and into Bengal territory. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figured out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. Throwing on third down, Tannehill. He's got a man, it's Berkser, the tight end. And he will have a Titans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. third quarter. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Nashville. It's Titan football here as they trail to begin the fourth quarter. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and ten. Now a play fake and it's Tannehill. Gets this to Ferkser, the tight end. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They tackle them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Back to the ground now, it's Henry. And he is going to be close to a first down as the tackle made at the Bengals 27. It's a five-yard gain, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. This will be play number eight here on the drive. It's third and a yard. Again, it's Henry, and he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. Come on, baby. Let's go. I like this focus there because he wasn't thinking about breaking that one big. All I thought about was, I need one. Let's go get that. Ended up picking up two. First and 10, Tannehill. 
under pressure, and he'll go down. Sacked back at the 31. Trey Hendrickson credit him with a sack, and it goes as a loss of six. It seemed like he kept going through those progressions, and I thought he might dump that underneath, but he couldn't get rid of the football in time. And I have to wonder if he was thinking while he was back there, I wish there were a lot less progressions on this play, just someone that I can dump the ball to and get it out of my hands. Second and 16. Another try after the first down sack. Tannehill. Yeah, this one nearly intercepted. Boy, that would have been a great time for their first pick. But instead, it's third down. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was a type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted. And if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. That's taken in by Ferkser. And out of bounds all the way down at the three. Like the design that we're seeing right there. This is what they need. Down by a touchdown here in the fourth. They just need to keep working their way downfield. And when they see openings, take their shots. A looming decision to make on the conversion down seven, but first things first, they need to score as they come up on first and goal. Oh no, he lost the football, but it looked like the Titans were able to recover and indeed they will keep possession of the ball. Fortunate to get that football back because trailing here in the second half, last thing they needed was to lose the possession. And the word I think of here is opportunity because it could have been lost there, their chance to score points but the opportunity for the defense was to go ahead and really close this game down if they were able to get possession. Very fortunate to get another shot. Here's second and goal. From the gun, here's Tannehill. This will go to Henry out wide. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. They'll wind up getting seven on the completion, but they'll still be faced now with a third and goal situation. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. Now Tannehill on third and goal toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. So it's been a long drive. They've held the ball for quite a while. Now what do you do here? Well, to me, at this stage, after this drive, this close to the goal line, three points would be a letdown. I'm going for it here. Likely the play of the game here, trailing in the final quarter and going for it on fourth and goal. Desperation time for Tannehill on fourth down. And it's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee. Nick Westbrook Aquino there to make the grab. And the Titans are an extra point away from tying this game here in the final minutes. But we are set up for a fantastic finish now. A fourth quarter touchdown here. We're an extra point away from a tie football game. And I know they're thinking about possibly going for two, but I'd go ahead and kick this one and just get it back to level. Now Bullock to add the extra point. And no sweat, he puts it through, and we are tied here in the fourth. The run drive that was, 16 plays all told. And the result in the end, the Titans touchdown. the score all even to this point as the kicks away 
And it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. Well, they just gave up the score to tie it. That's the bad news. The good news, plenty of time in this fourth quarter to try to grab that lead back. Bengals with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. He'll throw from the gun. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And incomplete on the deep ball. And with a dime look on defense, two extra defensive backs on the field have covered up essentially every blade of grass. That's allowed them to disrupt the play. So following the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 25. From the gun, to give to Mixon. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. Force the incompletion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in an expected passing situation. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far. The crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. Now it's Burrow. Pass complete to Higgins. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. So the Bengals in possession of the football here as we get your reset. They've got it first and 10 as they search for a go-ahead score. The Burroughs throw here into the hands of Boyd. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as... I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Here's a give to Mixon, and he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. They're making steady progress, but I see your face. You're worried about that clock. I'm worried about the clock, and at some point, you have to have a splash play in there as well. Second and 11 now after the loss. They'll stay on the ground, mix it again. Now Tennessee going to use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in the fourth. A field goal from this spot would be 51 yards. They'll try to move it closer on third down. Out of the shotgun, they run with Mixon. And he's going to get this to the 31, but that is still well short of what he needed. Now the Titans will use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 45 seconds left to go in the game. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This to take the lead here in the final minute. McPherson's kick is good. And the sideline celebrates as they have taken the lead in the final minute. All right, so time to reset here. It's a huge kick there, gives them the lead, but they've got to be careful that their celebrations aren't a little too premature. You're exactly right about that because there still is time for the other guys to run a few plays and get into field goal position. So this defense is going to need to come up with one final stop if they're going to get out of here with a victory. Yeah, 
Here's McPherson now to send it away. Ready to return. Here's Hilliard. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. Here we go. So now Tannehill and the Titans down 20 to 17. A little under 40 seconds to go. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. Tannehill. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. The Pro Bowl wideout Julio Jones is intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. Tannehill and that's complete to Brown able to get this all the way out close to midfield just with the doctor ordered on play one of this drive and crunch time and this is obviously a spot where you lean on your stars get the ball to them in open space and let them do what they do now Tannehill saying let's get to the line one last throw here for Tannehill Man open right side, it's Rodgers. And he's out of bounds as he gets this down to the 45. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it 